Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so over here in the Western Hemisphere, at least we are in summer and I am in summer vacay mode. So I did a very suitable uh, seaside or kind of any bod body of water side painting here today with some flip flops and a really cute starfish. So I guess we are at the seaside here today, <laughs> um, but this is totally customizable, super simple. Gonna take you guys through it every single step of the way as per usual. I have my three standard brushes that I use in most classes. So I have my one inch square wash brush. I have a medium sized pointed brush and then I have a small detail brush here as well. I'm gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen here. A little bit of water on there. <laughs> nice clean brushes, some fresh water. Uh, if you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that I use, uh, go ahead and check the description box below. It'll take you to my website and show you everything that you need to paint along. The colors that we're going to use for the background step of today's painting is going to be a phalo green, one of my favorites, a nice uh, ultramarine blue. I have white, yellow, and a little bit of a warm burnt sienna type brown. So it's kind of a shortcut of creating my sand color today. So you can create brown too, but I have this warm brown here. We're gonna use that and just make it really simple for everyone to paint along. So let's go ahead now and jump in with our biggest brush. And what we're going to do is start by mixing up a sand color. So I'm gonna grab my warm brown and I'm going to add a fair amount of white into it and a little bit of yellow. And you can make any sand color that you like, but I'm going for like a really classic, sort of clean, light colored sand. But a darker sand is beautiful too. You could even do a sort of pinkish sand or gosh, even a black sand beach. That would be gorgeous. Been to one of those in Hawaii. How cool. So I'm gonna just do this kind of standard sand color here. And we wanna have a diagonal. Uh, with this, we are gonna kind of cut our canvas, not quite in half, because we actually wanna have more space for our flip-flops than we do for our water. So maybe in about a third to two thirds or so. This is art, not math though, so don't get too technical here. Uh, and what we wanna do is create sort of like a wiggle. Okay, so in and out here, like so, very nice. Okay, now everything beneath that wiggle we are now going to fill in with that sand color a little bit of water as always it helps that paint go nice and smooth and you do kind of want to bring your brush strokes along the shape of the wiggle but then it's also going to be kind of back and forth on that diagonal here so you want to have a little bit of sort of variation in your color. So you don't necessarily need it to be all just this beige color. So again, we're doing diagonal brush strokes here within that sand. And then kind of as we work our way over, the brush strokes might get a little bit more in the shape of that curved line. And we're working pretty quickly here to get it all filled in and soaked into that nice canvas texture. And then once you have it all filled in with that solid beige or whatever color you got going, go ahead and grab a little bit of white. I'm going to do a few areas of sort of streaky white texture. And then I'm going to grab just a little bit of brown. I'm going to make a darker brown. I'm going to bring a couple streaks of that darker brown throughout my sand as well. Really simple here, just making it so that it's not just solid one color. Okay, and now I'm going to do my blue water. So I'm going to mix a gorgeous blue-green color. So I rinsed my big brush and I'm going to mix together my blue and my green. 
And then I'm going to bring a little bit of white into that color as well. A little bit more. So I'm going a pretty light kind of tropical color here. Very pretty, I really like that. And of course, a little bit of water as well. We are actually just going to bring that blue right next to the brown, keeping it really simple today for our first background step. We are gonna have some frothy white water later, but for now, we're just going to bring that blue right to the beige. Okay, and now we do want to kind of go with that water shape of the curve all the way off the side of the canvas here. Very, very easy. Just two parts of our background there, filling in the brush strokes in the shape of the curve. Then I'm going to grab a little bit more white, I'm going to make a lighter version. And I'm going to throw a few brush strokes of that lighter white in there as well, or lighter blue. And you can actually, so you can use your square brush this way where it's fatter, or you can also use it to create thinner lines. Okay, so you can kind of play around there and create some nice water movement and texture just with a little bit of wet on wet blending. And then once we have our background finished, we are actually going to let this layer dry. And then we're going to come back and add a whole bunch more. So that looks good for now. So I will see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background here and fresh colors. So I have two little areas of white because I am going to use a lot of white uh, in this second part of the class here. I have a little bit more of my phalo green, a little bit more ultramarine blue, red, a little bit more burnt sienna, and then also a little bit of black. I have clean brushes and I got fresh water at break. And I also got some fresh paper towels and I'm going to use these later, uh, actually here pretty soon, uh, for a step to create some really great frothy texture. You could also use like any sort of highly textured sponge uh, would work perfectly well as well. And we're going to actually now jump back into that step. We're gonna create our little white frothy shoreline here. And we're going to start with our medium sized brush and just white by itself. And with this white, I'm going to just do a white line where my blue meets my tan. Okay, where your water meets your sand. And in my case, I'm kind of covering the sand part to kind of even things out because I felt like I got a little bit too much sand to water ratio there. So I'm just kind of bringing the frothy part here into the tan rather than taking up more of the blue. Okay, and your white line here does not need to be even. It's gonna look good if you have some areas that are sort of thicker than other areas. But once we get this white line finished, nice fat white line there, what we're gonna do is grab our paper towels or sponge. Just one at a time here. I'm gonna crinkle my paper towel up into a ball like so. And then once I undo it, we're gonna have a nice kind of disposable textured sponge here. And then I'm going to dip into my white. And I'm going to use my new tool to go right along my shoreline here. And you actually want to have a lot of texture in this step. Things might get a little bit messy. 
And that is kind of the fun of it. So you want to pretty thoroughly cover your whole white line. And I picked up a little bit of, I guess what was a little bit of wet blue still, but I kind of liked that. So I just kept going. Okay, and I want to kind of cover that line that I just painted and then bring it out a little bit further. And in some areas you might even have some extra frothiness come up a little bit further and vice versa down onto the sand. Lots of paint. Don't be shy. Okay, very, very cute. I like it, I only needed to use one paper towel. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and block out our sandals, which is going to be sort of the main shape of our painting. Now that we have our background looking pretty good, so I'm gonna start, let's go ahead and start with the left hand sandal. Doesn't really matter which one you wanna start with. I'm gonna start with the heel, just so that I can kind of space this out nicely. I'm just gonna have one little swoop, like so. And then I'm going to swoop my way up, kind of come out for the toes a little bit, and then come round. So I like to kind of do these original shapes kind of heel and toe area. And then there's some areas that you might want to kind of adjust. I highly recommend using an actual sandal <laughs> as your guide. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one right next door. Just kind of eyeballing it. Just like so, and then you can kind of adjust it as need be. Have it come in a little bit and then out for the heel. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead now and grab a medium sized brush. I'm going to fill those in with the color that I want sort of the background part of my sandal to be. So in my case, I'm going to have really pretty teal sandals which is going to be my favorite phthalo green color with white. That's all you need there. And now I'm going to just take that beautiful green aqua color and I want to come out to keep the most outer sketch lines. Okay, the outermost white lines that I created always kind of starting small that way it's easier to make shapes bigger and then i'm just filling that in with that gorgeous teal really easy and that's probably the hardest part <laughs> so take a deep breath and a sigh of relief if you made it through, and you could certainly add multiple pairs of sandals. And you can make them whatever colors you like as well. So if you're in the United States, we are celebrating the 4th of July here this weekend. And last week's tutorial was very patriotic. This one is still kind of vacation, you know, summery but it's not so blatantly patriotic. However, making red, white, and blue sandals would be a really fun way to turn this class into something a bit more 4th of July themed, if you so desire. Okay, those base shapes are looking good. Everything is coming along nicely. Now I'm going to grab my smallest brush and I'm going to create my little starfish. Super cute going to first create purple. So purple is going to be red and blue together. And then I'm going to add a little bit of nice clean white into here as well and get 
a really pretty sort of medium purple color. For more on how to create colors, working with just your primaries, I actually have a course specifically on that called Color Theory 101 for the beginning acrylic artist, and that is available on Udemy and Skillshare. And you can check the description box below uh, for more information about that. If you're interested in how to blend colors and how to use the color wheel to do so, I also talk about how to make color schemes uh, and pleasing things like that. If you're having a hard time blending purple, sometimes it's a little tricky. That can also have to do with the quality of your paints. Uh, keep in mind too, you can also just buy purple <laughs> if you're struggling, uh, or you could do a different color, starfish, or even a seashell, something like that. Now, this seashell, or excuse me, this starfish is going to go kind of right here to kind of balance out my composition, but you can push yours wherever you would like. I'm going to start just by doing like the kind of star that they teach you how to do in grade school. And then I'm just going to bring out the starfish legs here a little bit from each one of those little star points and then also create a little bit of a curve to connect them. In my imagination, this is perhaps like you saw a starfish and you're at the beach so you threw your flip-flops off to take a really cute vacation photo. <laughs> There's always something like that in my imagination going on. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna kind of adjust it a little bit. Just wanna bring out his legs a little further and balance it out slightly. Always starting small so that it's easier to make bigger. Okay, that looks a little bit better. <laughs> I kind of like the wonkiness to it though, because there's all kinds of different angles they take and they're not always like exactly perfectly all five legs spread out like that. So that looks perfectly good to me. I'm going with it, we're working with it. It is cute, I like it. Okay, now let's do a little bit of kind of like shadows and things like that. We're going to go here back into our water just for a minute. So this is going to be just sort of another color that we're adding in here, sort of an accent color. I'm going to mix my blue and green together. I have my smallest brush here. I'm going to add just a few brush strokes of that really pretty kind of darker bluish green here in the background. And then still with my small brush, sort of around where my froth is, Going to do little hash marks, little kind of curly cues with a real light, almost kind of scribbly texture to create some shadow of the froth on the water. Some kind of curly cues and some shadows. Really light handed, not very many brush strokes for that step. Just a little tiny bit is all you need. And now I'm going to take a little bit of a darker brown. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brown that's toned down. So I'm going to use black and a little bit of white. So I'm essentially mixing that brown with gray. And with this color, going to do a few things. So I'm going to go kind of around my starfish a little bit. Kind of going all over with this one. We got a wet sand color going on. Now I'm going to do really light scribbles around this side of my foam. Okay, where the foam is 
touching the sand like so really light-handed here just the slightest little suggestion of an outline like so just a little bit okay looks good just a little bit more all right and then I'm gonna go around my sandals as well just creating kind of the suggestion of a shadow or a footprint around my sandals okay very cute all right now I'm going to go into my sandals again and I'm going to take a little bit sort of of this darker teal color kind of pulling the ocean colors here into my sandals you get to be your own shoe designer in today's class as well took a little bit of black into that blue green mixture and I'm going to go around the outside of my sandals with what might be like a layer of foam from the underside of the sandal or just a second color again you get to be your own shoe designer how often do you get that opportunity pretty fun okay and it can go all the way around but you can also have some areas where it's not outlined and that's okay because it's stylized and that is up to you And it doesn't need to be all solid. It can be kind of disjointed and different widths throughout. It's fine. Okay, very nice. Like that. And now we're going to go back into our starfish, kind of jumping around here a little bit. And do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to pull a little bit of black into my purple, creating another tone here, this time of purple. Okay, and with that darker purple, I'm just going to go around my starfish really easy. Just like so. Just creating another sort of shadow tone of purple here, giving our starfish a lot more depth and interest. Whatever color you would be working with here on your starfish, you're just going to create a darker tone of it. So you could do this with orange or green or whatever color your starfish may be. We're also going to pull that shadow color a little bit further up in a sort of triangle way right here in the innermost part of each of our little curves in between their legs. So that's going to give our starfish a lot more depth. Very nice. Okay, now to finish off that starfish, all we need to do is grab a little bit of white and then right in the center part here, of each of the legs we're going to just do dots that work their way towards the center and you don't want to go all the way in quite yet so I'm just kind of bringing them in towards the center right now and then just a little bit easier like so to kind of end them all at the same level and then you can do one in the center as well look at how cute that looks love that starfish <laughs> all right very nice you could even do multiple starfish if you'd like all right gonna jump back into my sandals now a little bit of black I'm going to have black straps of the flip-flops 
A little bit of water always helps the paint go nice and smooth. Now this part can be a little bit tricky as well. I'm going to start with this lower sandal. What you want to be thinking about is going right kind of in the center where your toes would be and then you're going to carry it kind of all the way down into sort of the lower middle part of the shoe. So I'm going to start again right kind of almost in the middle, a little bit more towards the center. And then I'm going to bring kind of like a bracket shaped curve all the way around up and then attach it to the back part of the shoe. Once you do one, it's much easier <laughs> to do the next ones. And this one I'm just kind of bringing to the same level, just like so. Okay, and now I'm going to do the other one in the same kind of way. Bringing it, curving it, and then ending it in the sort of back middle area. Curving it up around and down. Look at how cute those are. Once I have my main shapes there, I'm going to come back with my brush and thicken it up just a little bit. Like so. You want to have it end in a nice little curve. goes right into the shoe. You can check your flip-flops to see how they are made. You will come out of this painting a better shoe designer. <laughs> I know I've had to mend flip-flops on the fly, so I know a little bit about flip-flop designing myself. If you are painting along with me today, I would love to see your art. And I've created a Facebook group specifically for my students to share their art, whether it be from painting along with me or from your own studio or imagination. We would love to have you join us over there. It's called The Art Club, and there's a link to join in the description box below as well. I'm gonna take now a little bit of gray. That's just gonna be black and white together. And right in my straps, I'm just going to do a real quick swipe of gray right along the kind of curve. That's going to give me a nice little highlight, which I think just really adds to the flip-flop shape. And now I'm also going to do some really cute polka dots. And that's going to be my sort of piece to the resistance in my flip-flops. And you can also take that white if you need and add any more texture along your shoreline. I'm just feeling like mine's a little bit too transparent there. So just kind of adding a little bit of extra white in there as well. Kind of trying to find some clean white. <laughs> and then, yeah, so when you're making polka dots or stripes, you do kind of want to be mindful about following somewhat of a pattern. So in this case, they would kind of alternate. So any kind of design you want, stripes, uneven stripes, plaid, solid color. Again, you get to be the shoe designer today. I thought the polka dots came out pretty cute. And I just think that the white and the teal kind of, you know, translates the ocean colors. And it's also just kind of something that I would see myself wearing. So I'm excited to see what everyone chooses to do with their flip flops. And it's okay if they're not perfect. They're going to look really cute anyway. I don't really think they need to be the same either. And also keep in mind if you are doing the polka dots, 
that you want to have some kind of come off the edge. Okay, you don't want to have them all placed deliberately within your flip-flop. This pattern would just print. So in some areas, it's going to be off the edge. You could do these big or large, however you like. And I think other colors would be cute too. I considered adding like flowers, like daisies or plumerias or something to the shoe. I think that would be super cute, but I decided to keep it short and simple and sweet today for my beginner level audience. Okay, look at how cute that turned out. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I can't wait to hear from you. We would love to have you over in the art club. Please check out Color Theory 101 available on Udemy and Skillshare. That is all the instruction that I have for everyone this week. So until next time, stay creative.